Well, hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm gonna show you how to color this beautiful Gerbera Daisy with your Copic markers today. Coloring a white object can be really challenging, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with these particular colors. You could also change the colorway a little bit and use more grays or more blues instead of these kind of neutrals, yellows and browns and things that I'll be using. So whatever kind of colors you want. But I wanted to make this look like it's fading off into the distance. So I used a really old ink pad. It's like super, super, super really old ink pad. And it's a dye ink pad that just barely has anything in it. It took me like eight times stamping it to get it just this dark. I'm really scared for that ink pad because I'm going to have to find another one that works really well for new line coloring. And I'm a little afraid of that because this old dead one has been perfect for so long. And all the other ones that I try, they work okay, but this one just gives me the very, very lightest touch to the ink. So maybe I will find another one and just touch it to the surface of this one or something to try to find a way to make it work and last a little bit longer. But for the center of the flower, I googled what a Gerbera daisy, Gerbera, Gerbera, I'm not sure how you say it. I googled what it looks like on the inside and the one that I was using as my model for this had a dark center to it and then lots of little detail around the outside of the center. So that's what I was doing there with my several colors of marker. And then for the petals on the flower, the ones in the foreground in the photograph that I was looking at were the darkest. So I'm creating some shadows that are defining the under edge of all of those top petals on the flower, the ones at the very top, with my darkest color, and then going lighter and lighter as I carry that shading down to the bottom. Because these petals are the ones that are curling down underneath. They're in the shadows. They're not up into the sunlight. The one on the top is up in the sunlight but the ones down at the bottom are hidden from the sun, so they're gonna have more color on them. If you're using light grays, you can translate this basically visually into grays, or you can use blues. It kind of depends on what kind of colorway you want on the whole flower itself. But I'm starting with the darkest portion of my flower, which is gonna be the side closest to me. And then just move around with the same process around the whole flower, all the way around with my darkest color first, just putting a little bit of a line. And notice that I'm not outlining the entire petal. I'm starting with the dark place, the little triangle where the two shapes might meet, and then extending it a little bit, and then growing that with my mid-tone, and then growing that with my lighter color, and just keep expanding that. If you outline all the petals, it's gonna look like it's stamped, and you might as well just have used a stamp but I want these outlines around them to gradually get lighter as they're up into the sunshine more. So you can see those ones at the top, the outer edges of them are that very pale, pale color rather than being the dark color, but the dark color is okay down below. Now when a flower is, is kind of turning up toward the sun, there are gonna be a few dark spots right where some of those petals join at the center of the flower but then they quickly go out to lighter color. So I'm just gonna go over those with a lighter color and just flicking outward to create that, that center that looks like it's spiraling out in different directions. This stamp set, by the way, is another in the Mondo Flowers stamp set, stamp sets designed by the ever amazing Julie Ebersole and it's called Mondo Gerbera Daisy. Gerbera, Gerbera, yeah. And I will just continue with my flower using lighter and lighter colors now because I want that outside top edge to start to feel like it's disappearing, which means I want less and less of the mid-tone and dark color going out toward that outside edge and letting it slowly fade as it gets down to the, the petals on the outside edges and creating just a few places where I'll put a little marker stroke here and there. The lighter touch you can do when you're doing a white flower, the better. And if all else fails, you can always put a color behind the flower because that's gonna define that edge, but I wanted it to feel like it was just blasting off in really bright sunshine. 
and practically disappearing. So you just barely see that tan outline from that old stamp pad. I used a couple greens to create a nice dark stem underneath. And now I've got it mounted onto a card base and I'm gonna put my extra details on it. White pen takes a little bit longer to dry, so I try sometimes to wait until I get my work done before and get it all mounted on a card before I put that detail on. So I'm using a white pen to put detail into the, the black center and then using a micron pen to add a little more fuzzy detail on the outside brim of, of that flower center because the marker nib just doesn't get tiny enough. And once I'm most of the way done, I can really use a micron pen to, to do a little bit more. I wanted a slight more feel of green because the picture I had had a little more green in it. Not a ton, it, had, it was mostly yellow, but there was a tinge of that. So I went over just a little bit of it with a little bit more green to kind of intensify that color just ever so slightly more. And to finish off my card, I just put it onto a white card base with some dimensional adhesive down below it to pop that up. Very simple for the design of the card, but the coloring just came out so pretty. If you're interested in seeing more of the Ellen Hudson release, there's links in the doobly-doo as well as over on my blog. And of course, you can always pin things over there. And I will see you guys again very soon. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.